What's up, guys, and welcome to this segment of Pinckney's Prospects. I'm Billy Pinckney, and today we're joined by Detroit Tigers prospect, Zach Short. Zach, thank you for coming on. Thanks for having me. Yeah, now let's start off by talking about your time in college. You attended the Sacred Heart University. You want to talk about the experience that you had playing there? Yeah, um, it was, uh, I was very fortunate. You know, I only had one offer coming out of high school. I was really small. You know, I'm, I'm skinny now, and I think I was 100 and. 43 pounds going into freshman year when, when they weighed me on the first day. Um, and, you know, I came, I was very fortunate with the situation I walked into. The uh, shortstop ahead of me got drafted. So that and, the, and then the second baseman transferred. So me and the other um, middle infielder who were coming in kind of just had to play for who was ever playing short and second. And both of us started every game that we were there. It was, um, like I said, it was a very fortunate situation where, you know, I didn't have to sit as a freshman. You know, I kind of just walked in there, played every game, which was awesome. Um, but, yeah, I mean, it's a you know, small school in Connecticut, um, kind of a, a grinder school, if, if you will. Um, you know, we nothing was handed to us. It was always a grind with whatever you were trying to accomplish. You know, like we didn't have any indoor facilities. We didn't have – a, a field on campus you know we barely even had a field to go to and we played home games it was tough but it was awesome and that's what kind of molds you to the player you are today you know where you come from right and then 2015 you played in the cape cod league very well-known league for collegiate prospects how would you rate the level of talent in that league yeah that was a blast too um everything about the cape was awesome you know i got my ass handed to me there and <laughs> it was kind of like a wake-up call where i was the kind of you know the first time i really struggled athletically for a while you know you always just kind of go off of your athleticism and those guys you know I got out to a really hot start and it seemed like as soon as the guys from the college world series came in I just didn't get a hit for the rest of the season um but it's cool you know basically I was actually talking to my brothers about it the other day um you know like everybody in our lineup either got drafted or is playing pro ball or is like there's a handful of guys in the big leagues right now and you know you don't you know, you obviously realize it when you're going there of how, how good of competition it is. But, you know, when you really look back at it a few years, it's like, wow, he's in the big leagues. He's in the big leagues. He's in triple A. He's in double A. And it's really cool, you know, even around the league, just guys who you played against. Right. And there's going to be a lot more of those leagues, too, I'm sure, with the new structure of the affiliated teams. You see uh, Trenton pretty close to, uh, you know, where I am. And, you know, that that's a nice, pretty nice facility there. And they're now in one of those leagues. Right, exactly. You know, I, it obviously sucks that a lot of the teams got axed. Um, but, yeah, I mean, it's it should be interesting. I'm, I'm hoping and assuming that they have a plan for it, what they're going to do. So hopefully it's just kind of, you know, I think one of their plan was, to, you know, just to get better baseball. And obviously, you know, you're cutting down some teams where it's, you know, you don't have so many of the same levels. But, you know, I don't know. I don't know. It's above my pay grade. <laughs> then in 2016, uh, the Cubs drafted you in the 17th round. Can you talk about when you found out that you were drafted? Yeah, I was, uh, again, very fortunate situation where my junior year at school, it was kind of rolled off from the Cape. You know, I just couldn't, it was, I just struggled and it kind of just snowballed for a really long time. And, you know, the Cubs were one of the first teams that I talked to in the whole draft process. And, they were a team that stuck with me through the thick and thin. And, you know, I was, uh, you know, projecting you know, all the projections, and everything I was supposed to go, you know, from the fifth to 10th round. And I kind of just played myself out of it, you know, for one reason or another. And that, you know, I, that day that I was drafted, I was supposed to go, not supposed to, but slotted to go the day before on day two in like the ninth or 10th round and didn't happen. And then the next day it felt like, the longest day in the world. You know, I got up really early to go to my brother's game in New Jersey somewhere. And, you know, my agent was in my ear. He was kind of telling me, hey, stay ready early day three, which is, I think, rounds 11 to 40. And as, you know, the 11th and 12th round went, there was just radio silence for a while, it felt like. But picks were just coming in and in and in. And we didn't hear anything until the 16th round. The Cubs told my agent, hey, we're taking them next pick. And it was just the biggest sigh of relief where it was like, all right, you're there. Let's let's go now. And, right. you know, kind of put everything behind you and just have a fresh start. And you were with the Cubs for a number of years. As you send throughout the system from Murky Ball to AAA, guys talk about the major differences that they've noticed. 
And one of them seems to be the pitchers have better command of three pitches. Uh, when you get to double A, do you feel that way as well? Is double A really Absolutely. where guys gets that next level? Yeah, for sure. Because, I mean, you're playing guys who are who have, you know, a good amount of showtime at that point too. Either right. they're, they're rehabbing or, you know, guys are trying to hold on still. But you look up, you know, you look like you're facing a guy and on the scouting report it says, you know, he has three years of service and you're like, this is kind of we're facing the big leaguer this is nuts you know and that just happens from mostly you know double a on you're facing guys who are going to be in the big leagues or who are in the big leagues already and yeah like you said about the three pitches pitches there's no you know fastball count anymore it's you know two one yeah it's a fastball count you're getting a cutter you know you're you're getting a change up you know three one you kind of you're expecting fastball but you kind of have to be on your toes in the back of your mind he if he has control for something he's gonna throw it you know it, there's no there's no more of that and that's kind of where you realize hey like this is what you're gonna deal with if you keep on if you want to keep playing right and after last season the cubs sent you to the arizona fall league which consists of a lot of the game's top prospects did you enjoy playing in that league yeah that was also a blast it's kind of the same thing where it was just like a, an advanced level of the cape where you look around again Every year, you know, the guys around you in, the, in your clubhouse or who you faced, you know, they're debuting, they're in the they're in the show. And that that was cool because everybody's right there. You know, everybody's knocking on the door and you're there, the level of just conversation that is going on in the dugout throughout at bats. is just so it's so cool. Like guys would I wish I could record what is being said in there and just show like how smart these hitters are, or these pitchers are when it's just, again, the conversation that goes on is like baseball people would love it. I wish there was a way for, you know, for people to get their hands on that kind of things, but it's the fall league was again, one of my favorite experiences that I've had throughout pro ball. Right. And some guys who I've spoken to in the past about the league, they talk about how much they're treated like a big leaguer, you know, how oh, yeah. I'm sure the uniforms obviously are very major league, like you know with that patch on the side as well and were, were, did you feel that way as well in terms of being treated like a big leaguer yeah absolutely you know it's funny about the uniforms that was one thing that me and definitely my friends looked forward to when we when we heard that we were going to the fall league like oh you know we get to wear the the cubs blue or whatever it is and then we get there and our or, um the cubs facility was a home to one of the uh or to our team and we knew the clubby who was working there. And he was like, yeah, I got bad news. You know, we're, we're wearing a Nike uh, tryout uh, jersey this year. The whole league is. So we were like, no way. And it was completely different than what we expected it to be. But like you said, you know, you still had the patch on the shoulder. But it wasn't, you know, the replica that we were expecting. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, you were definitely treated like a big leader. You know, it's uh, even the umpires, you know, you're. You go up with those guys because they're trying to be in the same shoes as you are, except obviously in a different part of the game. But, you know, you see those guys from short season all the way up to, to the fall league. And it's just, you know, you it. Yeah, you you are treated like a bigler. You couldn't have said it any better. And then you spent spring training with the Cubs in 2020 before then getting traded off to the Tigers for Cameron Mabin right before this year's trade deadline. Did the trade come to you as a surprise and how difficult is it to leave an organization that drafted you and took that chance on you? Yeah. You know, it, it wasn't, it was, uh, you know, if you would have told me in June when the rosters first came out for the summer league, that would have been a, that I was getting traded. I think it would have been a little bit of a surprise, but you know, for one reason or another, I was left off of the summer camp list, um, which was, you know, it was a tough pill to swallow, but you know, it's a numbers game. Um, it is what it is. And, as time went on, when I realized I wasn't really getting any answers and I wasn't really, it didn't seem like I was playing this year. That's when I kind of realized I was hopeful, but you know, at the same time, I wasn't actually hoping to get traded just because I, I know everybody in the organization, such a first class organization. But you know, when that call did come, it was, it was like, Hey, it was almost like you got drafted again, where it was like, Hey, you know, let's ride. You got a full, a full clean slate ahead of you. And you know, it's time to, you know, another team wants you and you're thankful for the time that you had with the Cubs, but you know, let's balls to the wall now. Let's go. Right. 
Now you're currently on the Tigers top 30 prospect list. Is being on that list something that you focus on or is it something that's in the back of your mind that you're just trying to go out there and do your job on the field? Yeah, you know, when when you're coming up through the system, it's always cool. You keep an eye on it, you know, when you first get placed in there. But at, at the end of the day, it doesn't really mean too much. You know, you got to perform, you got to hit, you got to field, you got to do all this. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's always, it's cool to see, but you know, it's not like you're going up there like, Hey, I'm the whatever ranked, I'm the re- whatever ranked guy. I'm getting my food before you are, <laughs> you know, it's just, it's a cool little thing to have. But like I said, at the end of the day, you got to go out there and prove it. All right. Now does being on the 40 man roster hold greater weight. Yeah, that was pretty cool. When I, when I got added, um, you know, 2019, I had a rough year. I got hurt. Um, I broke my hand and missed a substantial amount of time, you know, and just never felt right again. And, you know, the Cubs had the, you know, the, the guts to put me on, you know, like they gave me a lot of, a lot of respect for, you know, they, they had the, uh, I don't know the word I'm looking for. Um, you know, they, they had a lot of confidence in me where it was, Hey, we know what you're capable of doing. And then they added me to the roster. And again, it was kind of like balls to the wall. Let's go. And obviously this year it was a tough year, but you know, that I'm still on the roster now, which it's is really good. you know, I'm very excited looking forward to next year. Hopefully that everything goes as planned. And, you know, being with the new organization again, it's it's pretty exciting. All right. And and being a hitter with last season canceled, is it tough to stay ready since you need to face live pitching and get your timing down? You know, how much of a setback do you believe the canceled season was and you think it could possibly have an impact on next year in terms of being ahead uh, of the pitchers? Because usually the pitchers are always ahead of the hitters earlier in spring training. And this, do you think, will have a greater impact because of the prolonged offseason? Yeah, I think for both for both ways. You know, I'm I'm uh, I'm pretty close with a bunch of pitchers for the most part. Uh, a lot of my close friends are pitchers, and you know, they're it's tough because even as a hitter, the only re- the the most realistic thing you're gonna get to live a the live game is you know live abs, and nobody has really had that unless you're how to facility with a bunch of other guys but again you know there's nothing like crowd there's nothing like you know being in a pressure situation but you know you try to make your practice as as game like as possible you know you go about your training that way um but yeah it's a good point i'd be interested to see in spring training whenever that is how behind or ahead the pitchers or hitters are um but you know it's I think guys are just so motivated, especially now having all this time off, you know, guys are just going to be chomping at the bit whenever that day comes that we can go back and play as a team. Um, And it it should be cool. You know, it's going to be the level of competition. I think is going to go up because guys are just so ready. And I think we're all just going to be so thankful to be out there playing again. Yeah. And I'd also like to get your thoughts on the MLB draft being shortened this past year to five rounds because you being a 17th rounder would not have gotten that opportunity with this draft in place and you know some guys will lose opportunities some might have to go to indie ball so what are your thoughts on that yeah that's tough like you said especially you know a later round guy um there's a lot of you know diamonds in the rough there um you know i can think of a bunch of guys off the top of my head who were even drafted after me that you know surpassed me in in the levels you know it's it's tough, but I mean, at the end of the day, all you need is a shot. You know, you need one, whatever that is, you know, you're an indie ball, you're in semi pro, wherever it is. You know, like I said, when we were talking before, I play with, you know, Trey Martin and Jason Agresti and those guys, they're good. You know, if they just need one team, one scout to like them and they're on a roster, they're on a team playing for, for an affiliated team. And yeah, it does suck. But at the end of the day, like I said, you need one team to one team to show interest in you, and hopefully you stick. And you just gotta keep performing. Yeah. And I ask this question to all the prospects that I talk to: Is there anyone you've modeled your game after, or someone who has influenced your game along the way? Uh, yeah. I mean, I I love watching YouTube. I love watching hitters. Just you know, any type of hitters. You know, I'm trying to take a little bit from each guy. Um, but it's cool. You know, when I was when we were um, in quarantine, when this first happened, I was out in Arizona and I stayed there with Ian Happ, Dakota Meckis and um, Nico Horner who were with the Cubs and, you know, talking with Nico and Happ, just to, you know, those guys are kind of shot through the system with the Cubs, you know, getting their, 
their thoughts on current current situations that they're in, you know, and just any games, like just little thoughts that they pick up and, you know, talking to them about their unique situations. It's really cool. Like we would hit, sit and have dinner. We'd all have a bat in our hand and just talk about hitting, awesome. you know, and talk about, yeah, you know, just like little things that they picked up on, whether it's, you know, traveling, whether it's pregame, postgame, you know, how they go about their scouting report, how they go about their treatment. And to, like I said about being in the dugout in the fall league, you know, listening to these guys talk is like, I wish that, you know, my two brothers could hear the conversations that they have because it's so intelligent and it's so, there's so much, the process behind it is just, it's, they're not really worried about the results. You know, they're worrying about how they go about each and every day and that, you know, it's not promising success, but you know, it, it, the cards are going to line up a lot better if you're preparing the way that they do and the way that they go about their business. So, you know, I, I give so much credit to them just talk, you know, I struggled a little bit in the past and hopefully, you know, the next time that like what, like what we said, when we're playing again, you know, I can take all those conversations we had and, you know, use them. All right. In a few sentences, how would you describe your game and yourself as a player? Um, I think I'm a hardworking, I, uh, I you know I'd like to say I'm hardworking. Uh, I try to be a great teammate at all times, um, and you know I mean just try not to get outworked. That's the uh, kind of the only thing I can really say. You know I uh, there's obviously a few flaws that I'm working on in my game, and I think that like I said, having those conversations with guys like that are going to hopefully take me to the next level. Right. And the last question I want to ask you today is what advice you would give to younger prospects, whether in high school or college, who might be going through that process of recruitment or getting drafted? Just, you know, don't let anybody outwork you and don't let anybody tell you no. Where, you know, if you're too small, too big, whatever it is, you know, if you put your mind to something, if you go to a small school like I did, you know, a later draft or a later round draft pick like I am, you know, you're, there's always a shot, like I said, if a team, if you, all you need is one person to like you. All right, Zach, I appreciate you coming on and enjoy the off season. Yeah, thank you. All right, to all you guys watching, thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you next time here on Pinkney's Prospects.